we have already solved question 1 of the winter series of 2023 question paper 52 of a levels chemistry 9701 now let's start with question 2 here a student investigates the rate of reaction when zinc reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid and the reaction is given here the student uses the following method and here are the steps you can always pause the video and read all the steps let's go ahead with question sub question a it says complete figure 2.1 to show the apparatus that the student can use to collect and measure the volume of hydrogen produced label your diagram so here is the reaction you can see one of the product is hydrogen gas and to collect the hydrogen gas and to measure it we are supposed to label the diagram and complete the diagram shown here so the first thing is I'm draw, going to draw a tube which can connect us to a gas syringe to collect the hydrogen gas. So let's finish drawing the tube. Tube here is another one which can carry hydrogen gas out of the conical flask. So now let's connect the gas syringe here. The gas syringe is going to be something like this. You can always draw with the scale with proper uh, gas syringe which can be seen here here is a gas syringe of course if you're going to measure the volume the graduation marks should also be shown here on the gas syringe that is which can measure the volume of hydrogen gas now if we are drawing an conical flask with something to collect the hydrogen gas it should be a sealed one so i'm sealing it with a cork rubber cork which can i show here so i'm writing it a cork or a seal you can write here you can label it as a gas syringe gas syringe of course and this is a tube which can carry the gas but okay uh, we don't need to label it yes of course if we draw here this is concentrated at cl so we will write it as sorry not concentrated it's dilute at cl so let's write it as dilute at cl now we are supposed to add zinc foil now zinc foil cannot be added directly just shown in the mixture because by the time we add some of the gas will escape out before we seal it so we need to provide it with a vessel so what i generally uh, explain my student is there should be a string which can hold a tube or a container which can carry a zinc foil so you can draw a zinc foil like this and label it as zinc foil like this a container carrying uh, uh, tied with a thread which can be dipped inside whenever required so this is something a container carrying a zinc foil dilute HCl we have labeled the gas syringe and the cork so this is how you're going to complete the diagram to show the collection of a uh, volume of hydrogen collection of hydrogen gas and measurement of its volume so now let's go ahead with the sub question next sub question b the student wants to perform a similar experiment using 0.1 mole per dm cube hcl describe how the student should make a standard solution of 250 centimeter cube of 0.1 mole per dm cube hcl starting from a solution of 2 moles per dm cube of hydrogen chloride hcl gas give the name and the size of any key apparatus which should be used and describe how the student should ensure that the volume is exactly 250 centimeter cube write your answer using a series of numbered steps so let's understand the question first we are provided with two moles per dm cube hydrochloric acid and we are supposed to make it to 0.1 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid that is we are supposed to dilute it so if we, if we are supposed to dilute it we need to find out that what volume of hydrochloric acid of these concentration we are going to use and make it a solution of total volume of 250 centimeter cube so my logic what i teach my students is direct cross multiplication that is 
if we are going to make 250 uh, centimeter cube of two we have we are provided with two moles per dm cube so if we are going to make 250 centimeter cube with two moles per dm cube and we are going to dilute it to 0 0.1 mole per dm cube this is the concentration which will be writing on the same side so what should be the volume used from 2 mole per dm cube we are going to make 250 centimeter cube solution and we want to dilute it to 0.1 mole per dm cube so what should be the volume used so you directly cross multiply and this gives an answer of 12.5 centimeter cube so here i have just shown a rough calculation outside but you can say volume is equal to 250 into 0 0.1 divide by 2.0 equal to 12.50 centimeter cube this is how you're going to write and show the calculation now if we start numbering and again let's read it the question it says give the name and size of any key apparatus which should be used and describe how the student should ensure the volume is exactly 20 250 centimeter cube so starting with 12.5 centimeter cube what we will say is that um, transfer transfer 12.50 centimeter cube of 2.0 mole per dm cube of HCl of HCl with the help of burette with the help of burette into 250 centimeter cube volumetric flask now understand i am mentioning each and every part what concentration of solution taken of what volume with the help of which apparatus to which apparatus so 250 uh, centimeter cube of volumetric flask now the next step is that dilute it to up to the mark dilute it up to the mark now volumetric flask always have one mark to indicate its volume so volumetric flask will have a one mark which will indicate up to that mark if the solution is filled it's 250 centimeter cubes so dilute it up to the mark with distilled water with distilled water now mentioning distilled water is also very important distilled water in volumetric flask in volumetric flask and shake well and shake well now i need a little more space because i had shown you the calculation and wasted some space but if you don't do it it's going to uh, fill up all your sentences in the given space and it's not going to make any problem so here how we describe all the steps specify what volume you are taking specify what concentration you are using initially specify all the apparatus up to the mark distilled water all this is very necessary to gain three marks so this is how you find out the volume to be used for any particular concentration understand what i have done what is the concentration we have taken and what is the volume we are going to make 250 of four from two mole per dm cube and we are going to dilute it to what 0 0.1 so what volume so this is how we cross multiply and find out and we get the answer okay question sub question b is done let's go ahead with question three it says a student carries out further experiments using higher concentration of hcl the student wears chemically resistant gloves when using six mole per dm cube hcl suggest why the simple answer here is that the concentrated HCl or the concentrated hydrochloric acid if you can specify is very corrosive very corrosive it can harm the skin so we need to wear the chemically resistant 
gloves now here the student obtains the results shown in table 2.1 the concentrations are given here time taken to collect 20 cm cube of hydrogen gas is also given here and you are supposed to find out 1 by t that is per second here and here I have already solved it for you. I have written the answers here. You can completely uh, read the question first before filling up. As I know the question, I have already done it. says, in this experiments, 1 by t can be con considered to be proportional to the initial rate of reaction. Complete the table by calculating 1 by t for each concentration. Give you an answer to 3 significant figures. And here you can see I have written my answers to 3 significant figures even after the decimal. So, this is how you are going to fill up the table that is very easy just carries one mark it says use your data from the table 2.1 to produce a sketch graph of 1 by t against the concentration in figure 2.2 so here is the concentration of x axis and here is the concentration uh, sorry 1 by t on y axis it says it is not necessary to include a scale on the axis label the sketch line a so what you are supposed to do is draw a line now let's understand what happens to 1 by t value when the concentration increases as the concentration increases you can see that the value of 1 by t also increases with a steady rate so what you can see is you can just draw a straight line with a scale i am not able to draw a straight line okay yes this is how i've drawn a straight line now and we are supposed to label it a so i'm labeling it a okay done on the figure 2.2 sketch a second line to show the graph of concentration against 1 by t if the powdered zinc is used in the experiment instead of zinc foil label this line b now the question is that if we have used powdered zinc in place of the zinc foil the rate of reaction is going to be faster and that's why the time taken will be lesser that is 1 by t will go bigger that is the rate of reaction will increase that is initial rate will increase and the gradient should also increase so this is how I label uh, drawn a line B with a steeper uh, gradient or you can say higher gradient. So it should the line should be above the line of A. So this is how we'll draw the line B. Let's go ahead with the next sub question. Using your data in table 2.1, reduce the rate equation for the reaction between zinc and HCl. So let's again have a look at the table 2.1 where we need to understand that how does the rate increases. So I've again written 1 by t values here for you and let's understand how what happens to the 1 by t value if we compare it with the concentration of HCl. Suppose if we compare here experiment 1 and 2. The concentration increases by the value of 1.5. So if it increases, let's understand how does the rate also increases. The rate, if you find out the ratio, you'll understand that it is also 1.5 times increasing. So if you check the experiment 2 and 4, here you can say the concentration got doubled compare these two value also the experiment 1 and experiment 3 again you can see that the rate also doubled that is multiplied by 2 so if you keep on comparing the ratio of the concentration and the ratio of the rate increase you will see it's the same if the concentration increases by 1.5 times the rate also increases by 1.5 times now we have already read in the question that 1 point t 1 by t 1 by t is proportional to the initial rate so you can consider these values as the rate values so if the rate increases with the same ratio as the concentration the rate of reaction here you can say is a first order reaction so you can write rate is equal to the first order of HCl that is the concentration of HCl power 1 which we don't need to mention 1 here but just to explain that as the order of reaction is 1 the concentration of HCl should be raised to the power of 1 with the rate constant k as shown in the equation here 
Okay, let's go ahead with sub question D. It says at higher concentrations than those shown in table 2.1, significant temperature increases occur. Suggest how line A in figure 2.2 would be different at these higher concentrations. Explain your answer. Now, if we talk about higher temperature, it's written at higher concentrations, temperature increasing occurs. So, if the temperature increase, the rate of reaction will increase. The rate of reaction will increase, speed of reaction will increase. So, what is going to happen to the line? Now, have a look at the line again. What is it? This is the rate, you can see, and this is the concentration. So, the rate increases. If the rate increases significantly with the concentration, the line is going to move up in a curved way this way because the rate increases significantly it's not increasing steadily if it increases steadily it's going to be a straight line but if increases significantly then the line goes curved so what are we going to write is the line a curves upward curves upward and here it's written explain your answers and in that case we'll write because with the increase in temperature with the increase in temperature with the increase in temperature rate increases rate increases significantly rate increases significantly so this is how we explain the change in the curved line okay suggest one way in which the temperature increase may be minimized now it says as the concentration increases the temperature increases significantly if you want to control the temperature keep the temperature constant obviously only one method is to use a water bath at a constant temperature so we can use just uh, right and reason suggest one way is that use water bath use water bath to maintain to maintain constant temperature to maintain constant temperature as simple as that wherever we want to maintain the temperature the only method left is to use the water bath now here it's next the sub question says the zinc foil has an oxide layer suggest how the oxide layer can be removed before weighing the zinc foil so the only thing is that we need to scratch off the oxide layer so how do we scratch off this uh, oxide layer it's using the sandpaper very simple so we can write scratch scratch off the oxide layer we scratch off the oxide layer with the help of with the help of sandpaper not only zinc at times we use magnesium strip also that also has to be scratched off with the sandpaper before using because the reactive metals like magnesium and zinc has to be scratched off from the oxide layer with the help of sandpaper that is a common method before using it in an experiment let's go ahead with the last and sub question if the student does not remove the oxide layer the initial rate of reaction is lower than it should be explain why the initial rate of reaction is lower than it should be now if you are not removing out the oxide layer obviously the first oxide will react with the acid now the zinc oxide zinc oxide reacts slowly reacts slowly initially and that is why the reaction rate is lower than the actual one because zinc reacts faster zinc is a reactive metal is going to react with the acid faster but then zinc oxide is a base and it's not very reactive it's not highly reactive so it's going to react slowly and that's why the initial rate is lower once the zinc oxide is removed it reacts with the acid then only the pure zinc will start reacting and then only the rate will increase so this is the main reason i've written it in a short because it just carries one mark says zinc oxide reacts slowly so here our question two also ends and the question paper also ends here you can see that the important values are given 
at the end so that you can make a use of it. I hope the paper is very clear now.